So you made it to the very last learning objective for this unit, and we're going to keep talking about polar coordinates, and we're going to talk about the graphs of polar coordinates. Now we can kind of vary the r and the theta to get some type of graph. All right, just like our normal functions, I create a relationship between the r and the theta. All right, just so we have like y or y equals x squared. There's a relationship between x and y in our rectangular coordinates. All right, we can do the same thing with r and theta. All right, Desmos is going to be able to graph some of these equations. I can't do all of them, but if you have an r and a theta in the equation, all right, generally you can graph them. All right, so let's do an example. All right, graph r equals two. It's just a relationship between r and the value 2. There's no theta, so I can make theta whatever I want. So I can make theta this, and r has to be 2. I can make theta this, and r has to be 2. I can make theta that, r has to be 2. So basically, no matter what direction I get, I'm going to go 2 away from the pole. And if I go the same uh, distance away from a point, what's that going to give me? That's going to give me a circle. All right, so r equals 2 is just going to be a circle where... The radius is two because I can go in every angle just a distance two. All right, so that's an example of a graph in polar coordinates. All right, it's a really simple equation, r equals two, and it gives me this nice circle when I graph it. All right, so if you type in r equals two in Desmos, you'll get this nice picture of a circle. I right, what about the graph of r equals theta? Again, you can graph it in Desmos to get a nicer picture than I'm going to be able to draw. All right, but the basic idea is, as I increase theta, the radius is also going to increase. So at zero, I go zero. At pi over 4, I'm going to go pi over 4. Pi over 2, I'm going to go pi over 2. 3 pi over 4, I'm going to go 3 pi over 4. At pi, I'm going to go all the way pi in that direction. And you kind of see what happens. As I go around the circle, my radius is going to get bigger and bigger. As I'm working around, I'm working to the outside, and I get this spiral effect. All right, so r equals theta. Right, a very common graph you'll see in polar just gives you a spiral. Again, graph it in Desmos. It'll look much nicer than the picture that I just drew. I can kind of see how you get a spiral. All right, and as we start graphing more of them, they're kind of harder to graph by hand. There's kind of a lot of reasoning that has to go on with what the angle is and what the radius is. So I'm just going to kind of have you try some in Desmos and kind of see what happens. All right, sometimes you get these really nice pictures. Sometimes you can make really funky things happen. All right, so the first one to try is just r equals sine of theta and r equals cosine of theta. I right, type those into Desmos, see what the graphs look like. All right, then we can start doing extra things with coefficients and numbers. All right, so try three sine of theta plus one. I right, see how that changes the graph from just sine of theta. All right, three r equals theta. How does that change from our r equals theta graph? And what happens if I start throwing in uh, our other trick functions? What if r equals cotangent? Right, maybe you want to try tangent and secant and cosecant. All these different ones make r equal to some trig function with that theta in parentheses. All right, here are some ones that are going to use some really interesting and fun graphs. And really is like the best thing about polar coordinates. You kind of just type in some random stuff with a sine and cosine and some coefficients everywhere. And you get these really funky graphs. All right, so try some of these graphs. All right, mix around. Uh, you get to this one, maybe make two a different number, make this two a different number, and this one makes seven, three or something. All right, if you just kind of play around with these, you'll get some funky shapes and some interesting pictures just from graphing something in polar coordinates. And for this multiple choice, which of these shapes do you think is easiest to graph in polar coordinates? So think about the shapes you're seeing as you're going through Desmos are the shapes we've seen in uh, our examples we did in this video. Which of these ones do you think is going to come up the most when you're uh, graphing in polar? It's going to be squares, circles, lines, or parabolas.